In this video, we're going to be talking about angles of elevation and depression as they relate to real-world problems. Imagine if you're looking at this, that you have two people. One person is at a higher elevation than the other person. Perhaps standing on a balcony, this person is standing on the ground. The person on the ground is looking straight ahead and then raising their gaze from the horizontal to get the angle of elevation which gives their line of sight to the other person and let's say that's 26 degrees. The person at the higher elevation is going to be looking straight ahead to get their initial sight line, a horizontal line, and then looking down from that horizontal, looking straight ahead, looking down to see the other person. And that angle of depression is 26 degrees. Angles of depression are when you're looking straight ahead and then you're looking down from that point till you get your line of sight on the object that you're looking at. Angle of elevation is when you're looking up from the horizontal. Now, one thing that, that we can say that's fairly clear from this diagram is that the angle of depression and the angle of elevation appear to be equal in this type of situation. And it's true because we should remember from geometry, these two horizontal lines are parallel. This green line that's connecting them or cutting the parallel lines is called a transversal. And when you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, these two angles are equal because they're called alternate interior angles. And the main reason that we're, we're mentioning this, this bit with the parallel lines and the angle of depression equal to the angle of elevation, is that often in real world problems people will diagram an angle of elevation correctly but they will not diagram an angle of depression correctly. Let me illustrate this on the next diagram. Let's say that you're the pilot of a crudely drawn airplane. You're trying to figure out your altitude because that device is not working, the altimeter is, is out of order you have in your line of sight the top of the control tower and it's possible that the distance from the control tower to directly underneath your airplane is something that could be measured. However, let's focus on this angle of depression. If you're the pilot of the airplane, you have a device where you're staring straight ahead and you measure your angle of depression downwards from that. When you see the top of the control tower Let's say that that angle of depression is 38 degrees. Now the problem with this typically is that a lot of people will now create this right triangle to find this distance, this height here. I'll call it H1. And they'll know that the angle of depression is actually occurring kind of outside of this triangle However, they'll put 38 degrees here. Now this is completely incorrect. I'm going to cross this out. The angle of depression, yes, is occurring outside of this triangle at the moment. However, we use the rule that the angle of depression equals the angle of elevation. So we're going to put the 38 degrees where it belongs in this diagram inside the triangle in this corner. Again, alternate interior angles are equal. These two lines are parallel. If you had 38 degrees here, you'd be working this problem incorrectly. And that's the main thrust of this, um, this video. Let's look at something on the next page, just a real quick example of how you might you know, use this. So let's say you're in an airplane and once again you've got that control tower. 
And when you see that control tower in your line of sight, your angle of depression on your device is measured to be 18 degrees. So what we really need to do is say, well, the 18 degrees should go here. We're trying to find this height. If this distance is 4,000 feet, we have enough information now to calculate this height. We can say the tan of 18 degrees equals h1 divided by 4,000 feet. And we can do our cross multiplication and to find h1, which is going to be equal to 4,000 times the tan of 18 degrees. Once we find h1, we can find the total altitude of the airplane by adding h1 plus the height of the control tower. which hopefully is something that we know. And again, this is just an example of using angles of elevation and beware of angles of depression. Make sure that you're putting them in the right place on your diagram.